Over the past 12 months, I've tested a lot of popular tech, including cameras, microphones, monitors, and more. But there's one thing that's had a bigger impact on my day-to-day -day workflow than anything else. And most people don't even know what it is. It's called a NAS. If you're a creator like me or a creative or any type of person who works with a lot of digital files, you probably know the problem. I've built up a messy collection of external hard drives over the years. I've also got a bunch of data backed up to Google Drive and then all of my video footage and files are scattered across multiple devices. And for me, it literally got to the point where I was maxing out the USB ports on my MacBook, plus having to use USB dongles to connect even more storage. So I was constantly plugging in, ejecting, and sorting through all of my different storage devices. And that was my setup until I discovered the world of home servers. And to be honest, there's way more to it than just organizing your files. So what is a home server or a NAS? As the way I like to think about it is it's kind of like having a computer that runs 24 seven in your home that just has a huge amount of storage. And then you can access that computer from any other device at any time, anywhere. And the term NAS just stands for network attached storage. So again, just think of it as a computer that's on your network that's used for storage. But again, because it's a computer and not just a drive, you can use it for so much more than just storage. And the cool thing is it's not just for IT nerds like me, it's also really useful for everyday use for anyone in your home. So I'm just gonna go through five of what I've found to be the biggest benefits of having a home server. And these are the ways that it's honestly changed my workflow and even just my everyday routine the most. And I'm gonna follow that just with some of my real experiences of some of the downsides and challenges of having a home server. So you can decide if it's something for you. Okay, so let's start out by talking about actual file storage, because for me, that's one of the biggest problems that a home server has solved. So like I said, I used to have all of my footage, all of my files scattered across a whole bunch of different drives. And it just became really cumbersome, time consuming, and quite confusing trying to remember where everything was stored. However, when I set up my home server, I was able to insert 26 terabytes worth of storage. And with a lot of servers, you can expand these up to be really massive, like more than hundred terabytes per server. Obviously this depends on your budget for actual hard drives. But the cool thing about a NAS is that you can upgrade them really easily depending on your budget and your needs. So if you don't need 26 terabytes, you could start with just two terabytes if you wanted to. Because while with a regular computer, you need heaps of IT expertise to upgrade the storage. With the NAS, it's really simple. You've got hard drive bays where you can just pop hard drives in and out really super easily. And so for me, what I did was I literally moved all of my data across all of these different drives all onto my NAS. And I've got them really clearly organized now so that it's very easy for me to find files without having to search for ages. And the cool thing is I can access it when I'm on my ethernet, also when I'm just sitting on my laptop on my Wi-Fi, and I can even access it when I'm out just over the internet. So I don't even have to worry about bringing external hard drives with me when I go out to the cafe for work, for example, or when I'm traveling. This has honestly been incredible and it's just so much less hassle. The next thing that I think is amazing about a home server is automatic backups. So I have experienced in the past when my Mac has actually died completely and I lost all the data on it. And I fear the same thing with my phone, especially all my photos. I'm often really concerned that if I lose my phone, I'm going to lose all of those memories. And again, this is where a home server can come in really handy. So I've got my Mac set up on a weekly schedule to just automatically back up my entire Mac system onto the home server so that in the future, if my Mac ever was to just die on me, I'd be able to fully restore all of my information onto a new Mac or on the same Mac if I was able to get it fixed without any problems. And the same thing with my phone. So there's a whole bunch of apps that you can install onto home servers. And there's quite a few that will automatically back up your photos for you as well in full high resolution. I personally use an app called Image and this will just back up my photos in the background over Wi-Fi so that I've always got a second copy on my server. The next big benefit has actually been peace of mind. And that's partly because of those automatic backups of my photos and my Mac, but also with the storage itself. So one of the big benefits of using a server over just a bunch of individual hard drives is if those individual hard drives ever fail on you, you're gonna lose all of your information. And it's often really hard to recover depending on the type of failure. Whereas with a home server, if you've got multiple hard drives in your server, you can set it up in what's called a RAID array and don't worry too much about the technicalities of it. But basically this just means that for me, for example, I've got three hard drives. And so if any one of those hard drives were to fail, I could actually just remove it, replace it with a new hard drive and the two remaining hard drives would actually be able to restore that third hard drive with all its information. So for me, as someone who's got heaps of really important data on my drives, this definitely gives me a lot of peace of mind. Now, of course, this isn't a 
true backup because of course there's always the chance that the NAS could get destroyed like in a fire or something like that. But once again, because a NAS is a computer, you can install apps onto your NAS and sometimes they're already installed in the operating system like they are on mine that let you automatically back up your NAS onto a cloud service. Now, obviously cloud service storage can be really expensive, especially when you get into the terabytes of storage. So for me, the way I do it is I've got specific folders that contain the most important data and I just back up those from my NAS. But again, it's really handy, very straightforward. You don't have to think about it too much. And it means your data is a lot more secure than it would be if it was just across a whole bunch of external hard drives. Now, the next two I really didn't expect, first of all, is home automation. So you can install a whole bunch of home automation apps onto your NAS and use these to run smart devices throughout your home. So for example, I've got one that actually lets me use Apple HomeKit enabled smart devices with my Android and vice versa. And again, because it's a computer that's running 24 seven, this system will always work as long as the server is running. And then finally, you can actually use it as a home entertainment hub. So if you own your own movie files or TV show files, you can put them all onto your NAS and then use a service like Plex, which is basically kind of like your own personal Netflix and then watch all of your home entertainment without even needing to use the internet. And honestly, this has been amazing. I probably use Plex just as much as I use Netflix these days and it's brilliant. Now, like I said, there are a few challenges to be aware of if you're looking into getting your first home server. The first is depending on how much money you spend on a server, it's probably not going to be as fast as a directly connected external hard drive, especially something like an SSD or an external NVMe drive. Now my NAS lets you connect up to 10 gig ethernet, which I personally think is worth the investment. A lot of cheaper NASs come in at 2.5 gig ethernet, which will still get you solid speeds. But if you can aim for 10 gig E, then you're probably gonna be pretty set. I regularly edit off my NAS. And while there is a little bit of a lag, it's very manageable and I have no real issues putting together entire video projects with footage that's being pulled directly from the server. Another thing to keep in mind is that it does run 24 seven. And while that is a benefit, you also have to factor in the energy expense and also the noise. Personally, I find they're not that expensive to run. Might be an extra $5 on your power bill per month. And then for noise, for me personally, I store mine in my wardrobe in my office. And I can still hear it from time to time if the fans are running a bit louder. But again, this can depend on the model that you buy. Some are quieter than others. Next, like I said, it's still kind of one point of failure. So if something catastrophic was to happen to the NAS, then just like a regular external hard drive, you're gonna lose all of your data, which is why I still recommend backing up your most important files to a cloud service or even storing them off site somehow, like a friend or family member's house. Next is the cost. Generally buying a home server and then all the hard drives that go in it is gonna work out to be more expensive than just getting a regular external hard drive. But if you ask me, I think it's 100% worth it, especially if you work with a lot of data. Again, for me, it's completely changed my workflow. I no longer am constantly having to sort through heaps of different hard drives and it just does so much more than just store my data. And that's the last point. A NAS does require a little bit of tech know-how. Increasingly, manufacturers are making them easier to use. And I think a lot of it depends on the type of NAS that you buy. Some are designed to be really user-friendly. I find mine very user-friendly overall. And I think if you're somewhat tech savvy and don't mind having a few conversations with ChatGPT to work things out, you'd be totally fine. But I'd recommend getting one that's on the simpler side so that you don't get overwhelmed. I'd probably recommend getting a Synology NAS. They're kind of known as the most reputable and straightforward NASs to use. Mine is a Zimacube Pro, which I really like, but because it's a newer brand, I have found it to be a bit buggy and a little bit challenging to use. So if you're a total beginner, I probably would steer clear of that for now. But honestly, for the first time, my digital life feels really under control with the NAS. And even though it might not be as exciting as something like a camera, for me, it's honestly been the best tech upgrade that I've had in the past 12 months, if not the past two years. And I think especially if you're a video creator who's been working with files for a while now, I think investing in a NAS could be a really smart move. So I hope that helped. If you got something out of this video, then please don't forget to subscribe. It actually does really help out my channel. And in the meantime, if you're interested in the Zima Cube Pro, which is my NAS, I've got an actual review video, which I did right here. So feel free to go and check that out.